Cheers, guys. I hope you had a great weekend and feel refreshed for another lesson from Daniel's Security Academy. Grab yourself a chair, your favorite drink, and make sure to write anything down. Taking a deeper look into symmetric encryption and mode of operations, we today will cover the asymmetric encryption side of things. We will start with a recap of the asymmetric system slide we had in the cryptography session, as well as a run through the Diffie-Hellman algorithm. Then we will take a deeper look into the RSA algorithm and how it is being used. Once we got this covered, as always, we do a small summary for the notes at the end. In contrast to symmetric encryption and systems, we have asymmetric systems. This was invented significantly later than symmetric systems. In 1976, Whitfield, Diffie and Martin Hellman came up with a new algorithm structure. This structure is based on two different keys, one for encryption and one another for decrypting ciphertext. The public key is, as the name already says, publicly available. This key is used to encrypt messages. On the other side, we have the private key, which always must be kept private. This key functions as a decrypting key for messages which are sent to me and were encrypted with my public key. Important to mention here is that every participant in the network uses the same encryption algorithm, such as Diffie-Hellman or RSA. The number of keys is simple as we have two keys per participant. So we have keys equal to n times 2, where n is the number of participants. Now let's run this through a high-level example. Alice wants to send the message hello to Bob. Therefore, she grabs his public key to encrypt the message. This encrypted message is sent to Bob, who ultimately takes his own private key to decrypt the ciphertext to eventually receive the hello message from Alice. The Diffie-Hellman algorithm is not an encryption algorithm itself, it's rather a key exchange method. It is used to agree or create a common key in a secret way. A hybrid encryption system often relies on Diffie-Hellman as the key generator for the symmetric encryption part, like for example AES. Mr. Diffie and Mr. Hellman are the creators of the public key cryptography concept. However, they were not the first one to create an actual algorithm on its base. Rivest, Shamir and Edelman produced the RSA algorithm, which is first asymmetric encryption. Nowadays, the Diffie-Hellman algorithm is most often used with an elliptic curve variation in order to increase the security of the method. An example of an elliptic curve is shown below. Let's run a short example on the Diffie-Hellman algorithm where we have again Alice and Bob trying to communicate with each other. In the first step, Alice and Bob need to agree on a prime number and a generator number. In this example, we take 13 as the prime number and 6 as the generator. Then both come with a private key for themselves. Alice wants to use 5 and Bob wants to take 4. Afterwards, they are both utilizing a fixed mathematical equation, taking the generator to the private key power and then modulo it with the prime number. In this example, Alice is taking 6 to the 5th power and modulo it with 13, so the remainder is 2. 2 now becomes the public key of Alice. Bob is doing the same with his own private key and comes up with the public key of 9. Now they simply exchange those public keys and use them to calculate a shared secret. Here Alice takes the public key of Bob to the private key power again and then modulate it with the prime number. Bob is doing it too and should come to the same exact number as Alice. In this example, 3. The 3 will then be used as a secret for onward encryption and communication. As said before, 
the RSA method was the first asymmetric encryption algorithm. The three founders, Rivest, Shamir, and Edelman, felt challenged by the Diffie-Hellman concept of public key cryptography and finally came up with an algorithm. The algorithm is based on a one-way function, which is easy to produce, but hard to replicate without having the inputs. This is based on the factoring challenge. In order to feed this one-way function, prime numbers are required. Here we are not talking about prime numbers like 3 or 5. We are talking about huge prime numbers. Let's have an example of this one. And this is not the full RSA algorithm, which we will cover in the next slides. This is just a brief overview. Let's take the first prime number as 13 and the second one as 11. Now we take the product of the two prime numbers, which is 143. So now the challenge hackers with one-way functions have is to get back from 143 to the two prime numbers and the product itself cannot break the ciphertext. So without knowing the two prime numbers, you cannot break the ciphertext. With small prime numbers, it is rather easy. So therefore, RSA uses huge prime numbers like the following two, which I'm not going to even try to read out as they are too huge. <laughs> now, let's get deep into the RSA algorithm by running through it once with an example on the right hand side. First step is to select two prime numbers P and Q, which may not be identical. In our example, we take again P as 11 and Q as 13. Then we have to calculate N, which is the product of P times Q. Therefore, N is 11 times 13, resulting in 143, just as we had on the previous slide. Next up, we have Phi of N as P minus 1 times Q minus 1. In our example, this means that we have 11 minus 1 times 13 minus 1, making it 10 times 12, so 120. Um, in our next step, we have to select E, the encryptor, which is relatively prime to the just calculated phi of n. Let's pick E as 23 here. The final step before we can go into encryption and decryption, we need to calculate D which is the decryptor. D is the formula multiplic multiplicative inversive of E modulo phi of n. That's a hell of an equation. When we plug our numbers into the second formula, we have the formula to find D based on the extended Euclidean algorithm. To shorten the process here, I just tell you that we have 47 as D and minus 1 as the k to prove the formula to be equal 1. Now we finally have all variables to encrypt the message. Here we need the equation c identical to m to the power of e modular n. If we want to encrypt the message of 1111, which is 15 in numeric, so we take 15 to the power of 23 modulo 143 resulting in 20. In order to decrypt a cipher text, we use a similar equation of m identical to c to the power of d modulo n. Let's use this formula now to decrypt the encrypted text we just created. So we take the 20 to the power of 47 modulo 143 equaling 15. Yeah, it worked! After this heavy round of math, we're taking a break and having a short summary. In total, we have three different asymmetric systems in place, which are having the biggest popularity. They also have unlike scopes. The first one in the list, DSA, 
will be covered in the next session as it is a bit complicated and requires quite a lot of steps. DSA, however, is also focusing on digital signatures instead of encryption. Diffie Hellman is the pioneer on the field of public key, public key cryptography and is mainly used for exchanging keys in hybrid encryption setups, where a setup or a symmetric encryption method requires a secure key. Okay. Lastly, we have RSA as the first asymmetric algorithm on the field and holding still a valid option after so many years. Its use is for asymmetric encryption, but also for digital signatures. All are based on the public key cryptography concept as well as are all are based on the use of prime numbers and the problem of factoring for the algorithm's advantage. A way to increase the security in a symmetric or asymmetric systems, I'm sorry, is to increase the key length. Therefore, the longer the key, the more secure the algorithm is in the end. Finally, hybrid encryption systems are combining the best of both worlds. High speed encryption from symmetric encryption algorithms in order to encrypt also huge amount of data and a secure exchange of keys or message on an unsecure network such as the internet utilizing asymmetric systems. The internet always needs to be considered as a non-secure medium. That's it for today's session. I hope it helped you guys with learning something new, as always, or simply having a refresh of know-how for your business. I hope to see you in the upcoming videos. Next up, we'll take a deep look into the digital signature algorithm the third of the asymmetric systems with strong rele relevance. Feel free to leave comments, questions and feedback under the video and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you actually enjoy my content. Have a good one and stay safe.